what's going on guys back with the frontier uh, another update it's been a while you know i haven't been able to do a lot of trips in it so i figured i'd just give you guys another update um just had a lot of work and stuff so couldn't really go out uh, but we've got some new dirt king lowers in here um these are great these are the titan oem lowers uh same rad flow shock same csd spindles and then we've got the prg heimed uh tie rods so just repaint them you can see where the old paint was and where it had chipped and so you know just kind of sanded it down lightly and then just painted it over and i'll probably wrap them up what i usually wind up doing is i'll wrap them in some inner tube from the bike just to prevent like a lot of rock uh rock chips and uh premature weathering i feel like um, does it really do anything uh who knows it looks kind of cool it's a little different on these longer road trips i feel like in the past i'd get a lot of tiny little rock chips and i'd have to repaint it um and i hated seeing these get even like a tiny bit rusty so and then we also have these locked off-road bump stops which is a pretty good new addition they rerouted the abs lines and the fuel lines for me this is also ffr fabrication um they look great they strike the pad um really robust i haven't done any wheeling so you know don't really know what they feel like when they strike but nice and robust and haven't done the limit straps yet um i've been told that the truck under full unload of the suspension isn't really needed at the moment it's not a huge concern so i'll probably just run it for a little bit you know i definitely should put some on but at the moment it's not the highest priority so the front end is looking pretty good looking pretty beefy i don't think i want to go really any bigger on the suspension at the moment i haven't done a whole lot of wheeling so can't really justify it and as well since we're getting back here i've got new toyo uh, at2s uh front and rear i actually got a nail in my bfgs so i just went all around and we did all of them because i think bfgs were on back order so i actually took one of the still semi good bfgs and put it on the spare as opposed to having the toyo and honestly i should probably have this as a toyo too but um at the moment this is probably the easiest option because one of them was covered by the warranty um and it was an unfortunate nail so they couldn't repair it and in the rear i've actually gone ahead and let me zoom this out here uh remove the rear seats um super easy you know i kind of wanted to make a video about it but it's just like such a small task Pretty unnecessary you can see where all the holes were um, mounting points so I just put some uh, RTV uh, silicone in there because these do go through all the way to the uh, through the ground so you can see through and obviously don't want any fumes coming in or anything like that so that was um, a fun little project and I guess I somehow got a little stain there that we'll have to remove in the future but I um, wanted to make a wooden platform of some sort to mount a Dometic cooler that I acquired in there. So that's going to be a nice space for overlanding, if you will, or camping. Uh, it's a rather large fridge, which I'll show you guys in just a moment. But that's pretty much it. Uh, some small updates, but big updates, if you will. So yeah, the front end is definitely buttoned up and looking really nice, especially with those new lower control arms. They are, you know, I'll take you further back. Very nice looking. Uh, you don't have that point where you have the old sway bar links so they don't hang down as low, but uh, they're beefy and they're strong. My old, uh, Lowers were actually so worn out that ball joints, when they tried to replace them, they were just super loose in there. And I tried to do it myself, and then at that point, I figured um, it's probably time to upgrade to something else that's beefier. Um, but I've done a handful of drives. One drive to Tahoe, which is, you know, very nice. Truck is feeling really good. Um, so this is that cooler I was telling you guys about right over here. Um, it's a CFX, I believe 75, so it's rather large. Um, you can see it next to the other boxes. Uh, it takes up a lot of room, so it's going to fit nicely in that spot board, but it, I won't be able to put it on any sort of drawer system where I can roll it out like a lot of the Overland guys do. It's simply too large, and for the price that I got it at, I think it was well worth it. It's just 
now I have to figure out a solution to get into it. Um, so unfortunately I won't be able to roll it out and I don't want to put it into the back of the uh, truck at all. There's simply not enough room without having to relocate the tire carrier, which I'll show you guys right now. Um, and I think that'll be something for the future where the tire possibly will sit upwards and to the side, um, depending on how I want to lay out the suspension in the rear, obviously. Um, might be able to fit the cooler in here. You could probably slide out. But I like the use of my bed, even though it's a small space. Um, I can still fit two bikes, one on that side and one on the other with the tailgate pad. So I try not to use that space too much or relocate stuff where it'll bump into that because I do want to be able to have the ability to carry bikes um, on top of having a hitch uh, just because I'm, I'm a big, I'm probably a bigger mountain biker than an off-road er, if you will. But at some point, I do need to, you know, kind of fix up some of the spots where the liner has been abused. If you see here, uh, some of the side, you know, taking in, in and out the bikes, the pedals will chip aside. So I need to kind of fix that. But the bedsides are held up really well. So is the front. Uh, overall, the truck is driving really good. No new additions in the front at all. Nothing crazy here. Um, the ram mount is working really well. Very happy to uh, take the time to do the install on that. Um, you know, nothing too difficult. Just a little tedious to drill the holes and line everything up. But you know, don't have to worry about that uh, suction cup mount falling off every time it gets really hot or really cold. It's just in a permanent position, which is great. Um, did want to mount something here for the GPS. Uh, when I decide to run one and possibly taking this out because nobody really uses a CB mount anymore or a CB radio I'm sorry uh, at least none of the people I wheel with it's usually just walkie talkies so we'll most likely wind up getting rid of that my old zip ties and then I can get rid of unfortunately this big old antenna uh, which is it's kind of fun if you look at the side of the profile it gives it sort of a fun look um, Antenna. But honestly, you guys, that's pretty much it. Um, thanks for whoever is still watching my videos or if you're new to the channel. Uh, videos are slow, unfortunately. I really hope to produce more stuff for you guys to look at. Uh, it's mostly for fun for me, it's not super serious. So the intervals between videos can be kind of long. And I do want to start doing some motorcycle stuff. I've been kind of getting into that. Uh, my last video was my 250, and I've since upgraded since then. I've had that 250 for about, I think, late December. So that was about eight months now. So there's that guy sitting here, and I was able to purchase this for myself recently, which is very nice. I've got the 701 Husqvarna Supermoto. Very clean, um, just got all the registration and stuff done and really loving it with these tires. But I'm gonna make another video about that and the transition from riding a 250 over just because, you know, in the eight months span, I put about 2,500 miles on that 250 and I really figured out what I wanted to do. And I still wanna do some dual sporting stuff, but this seems to be more of my style at the moment. So, I'll leave that there and then hopefully see you guys in the immediate future for another video update on maybe the motorcycle or the truck. Thanks for listening guys.